Hey guys, it's Caitlin Moss here, and you are now tuned in to Live on Reloaded. This is Mia Anstein, and you are tuned in to Live on Reloaded. Hey guys, it's Griffin with Backwoods Bow Honey, and you're tuned in to Live on Reloaded. Man, how many bullet holes y'all put in that thing? But it sounded like World War Three up in there. Um, we're going to let the chat room load up a little bit more, and uh, then we'll get started tonight. We're going to do something different. We have a youth group with us. They are called Backwoods Bow Hunting. Um, we feel like it's our responsibility to get out there and recruit as adults, as outdoorsmen, and uh, we want to show some appreciation to the to the youth too. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. So hopefully, y'all stick around, show these guys some some support, and uh, hopefully, you got a young one that you can bring into the stream with you and uh, let them see what it's like that that other youngsters enjoy the outdoors also, not just daddy and and uncle and grandpa. Absolutely. You know, just some pros of, of why it's important to get the youth outdoors. You know, of course, you got the bonding and the tradition, um, conservation. You're building interest outside of technology, developing life skills like discipline, patience, hard work, um, failure and success. It's a great way to build confidence, um, teach responsibilities and gun safety. You know, the, the life and death or the circle of life, if you will, and uh, where food comes from. You know, a lot of people think that you just go out there and and you buy food from the grocery store and that's not the case McDonald's. yeah yeah mcdonald's chicken nuggets where them nuggets come from where that where that burger come from you know <laughs> and of course it also teaches independence so uh we're real excited to have these guys on here we hope that y'all will uh enjoy them too all uh, right so most kids Y'all's age might get discouraged and lose interest in hunting altogether. If they have a slow day out there hunting, they don't see nothing or they can't handle the weather. Um, what keeps y'all motivated in going back into the woods? You know, most kids today, y'all's age, they don't do that. They're in there playing Fortnite, Call of Duty, and all that stuff. It's rare to see y'all at y'all's age doing it. What keeps y'all motivated in coming back into the woods? Just want a big deer. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> just want a I mean, we've all been hunting since uh, three years old. I think I started when I was five, and these boys are probably a little younger. Um, it's just the the kind of drive we have is just like to shoot, you know, mature deer and be good stewards of the land and uh, do what's best for the outdoors, really. That's awesome. I'm guessing that y'all's dad's hunt. Is that what got y'all into hunting? Yeah. Yeah, my my dad's my dad hunts a little bit. My uncle is what got me started mostly. My uncle uh, okay. taught. Uh, I notice you guys have a lot of good land there that you that you're hunting on. Do you find those spots yourself, or is that like is that land like family land that you've always been on, or is it? I mean, or do you actually? How do you find your spots when you go hunt? Uh. We hunt, uh, we hunt a lot in southern West Virginia, but uh, we do a lot of hunting on our farm here, my farm here, and then they have a farm too. And uh, we have a family friend that uh, we're, it's down in Putnam County, and that's where that's where you'll see, you know, us in the box stand and uh, rifle hunting. Nice. And then we also hunt public land too. Nice. I'm not sure if y'all are aware, but it's becoming less common to see hunters y'all age these days. What are some things y'all think we can do to get more of the younger generation into hunting? Would y'all have any tips to getting younger guys into it? Um, well, I, I think one of the things that helps out the most is, uh, is, is cause I've, I've worked with several um, young people. I'm the, 
the youth pastor from up the road. Uh, one thing that's really helped out there is uh, I found if I could get them interested in shooting a bow or a gun, uh, or if you can start that interest first, and, and then from there it becomes more developed and they want to know more. We have, I have two or three other guys right now that are wanting to learn more about hunting and I got them into archery two years ago. So um, that's that's kind of it. Uh, you know, if you can get them somewhat related uh, to, to something that they like, um, you know, whether it be archery or, or rifles or pistols. We have one guy that started hunting with us uh, that just started shooting pistols with us and it became a, a hunting thing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I agree with that. I tried to get my boy in the hunt and got him a rifle when he was, I think it was his 11th birthday. Took him out shooting, trying to side it in. Um, scope popped him in the eye, so he, he wouldn't touch his rifle for about two or three years now. I got him this year out there shooting, so got to work him in slow. I think it's good to get him started early on a, maybe a BB gun and work him up to a 22 and then you know, work him up to a, to a deer hunting caliber. But Yeah, Absolutely. good answer. Good answer. No. What out of all out of all your hunts, what's your most memorable? Oh, definitely. Oh, the big, the uh, big one. Ours, I know ours, I don't know about Jordan, but I, ours is definitely that twenty fifteen. That it was twenty fifteen and the first morning of rifle season, it was definitely that big buck. I'd say it probably it was probably in the one seventies. Yeah. Um, That's oh wow. It it's the biggest buck I've ever laid my eyes on. Um <laughs> we shot and it it dropped and we're all celebrating everything we're we're glassing it with the binoculars and the deer's heads almost a foot off the ground because it's it's antlers are holding its head so high off the ground and uh about two minutes goes by and the deer throws its head up and um Connor says, he's Con getting up. Yeah, Connor told my uncle, he was like, he's getting up. And then he, we, we kind of just shook it off. He was like, oh, he ain't going anywhere. And we looked again, and he's on his feet and started down the hill. So we went after him and Never did, found nothing didn't, find a, didn't find a drop of blood. Just found a little bit of hair, and that was all it was. But, I mean – the deer slid probably 10 feet on its face. But <laughs> awesome. it, was, it was an upset for sure. Now I got to ask you, I know who was, cause I've seen the video, but uh, this right here, it cracks me up. Y'all in the chat room, you got to listen to this. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> man, how many bullet holes y'all put in that thing? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I shot, I shot, because what we do there's there's four of us in the box stand opening morning, and uh, I had I had first what we do we draw straws to see who gets first shot, and I had second shot so. If you shoot and miss, the deer's free game, pretty much. Oh, okay. So I shot. This deer's about three hundred yards. I shoot and miss. And then Dalton shoots and, and misses. And I rack another one to shoot and hit it, hit it right behind the shoulder. And that's when you could hear me say, "I hit it, I hit it." Uh, <laughs> that's when it ran over the hill. But it sounded like World War Three up in there. Man, it did. That was, yeah, I was letting them fly, wasn't you? Yeah. Now, one of my favorite videos that I've watched is the turkey video. Oh, yeah. yeah the running gun, and yeah, I saw that, too. I <laughs> thought I had that on here. I do not have that footage. I meant to put that up here. Now, what, what was, like, what, what, I, I just have to ask, uh, like, what was your, um, I mean, were you, were you trying to get it closer and it just wouldn't come in? I mean, tell, tell us a little <laughs> bit about it. I was I was hunting public land and uh, we heard the bird all day long, and I, I he was just hung up on that bank, so I tried to sneak over the edge of the hill, and the bird took off running. 
So I pulled up and shot and struck another one in it and took off running up the hill. <laughs> but he, he ended up flying way down another ridge. So he got away. Now, y'all like to hunt bear, turkey, and deer and, and about everything, right? I got some uh, bear footage yeah. here of you. I believe that was you, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that was me and Jordan filmed me. Y'all yeah, never did recover this this bear. Y'all could never find it. No, we uh, we ended up bumping out of, bumping it out of its bed about after four or five hours after it was shot. We bumped it up and we lost the blood trail. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, it was raining pretty hard that day, wasn't it? Yep, it was pouring. Well, that that kind of answered my question. I was going to ask, did you poke it before you? Uh, Went over there and sat next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yanks, yeah, <scared> bears. <laughs> yeah, I don't play around with those things. Those things are they're land sharks. Oh yeah, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> so who all you got back there with? You want to let the crew introduce herself, say their names, state y'all's yeah. age, stuff like that. Maybe what got y'all? I'm Griffin Boggs, and this is a. Uh, I'm Dalton Boggs, and I'm 13 or 14. Connor Boggs, I'm 16. I'm uh, Jordan Travis. I am 29. <laughs> <laughs> y'all making him babysit y'all or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I got to say, man, I admire y'all's uh, y'all's work ethic. I know I can't even get my kid to go out and, and uh, take the garbage out, but I seen that y'all was – Y'all was out here tilling up the land and uh, putting in food plots and raking and all that stuff. I, I got to say, I admire that from y'all, man. It's not every day you see kids out there doing that on their own. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Did the food work. plots bring you any success? Oh, yeah. I planted uh, biologic uh, beans and uh, what else I planted? Clover. Mostly the beans did the best. Yeah. They can't resist them beans, can they? Oh, no. They love them. <laughs> now, I have a question for you guys. Who is the best hunter and who's the best shot? Me. <laughs> Definitely me. <laughs> I don't know. He's good to take Oh, well, yeah. I Jordan. About Jordan being here. Yeah, Jordan's good to be here. <laughs> Jordan shoots inside of a tennis ball at 100 yards with a bow. So, I thought he was talking about around us three. Um, I'm the best. Griffin's the best with a bow. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think as far well, as work, they're, they're, they're all pretty. They're all pretty dedicated to it. I mean, realistically, getting in front of a big deer is, uh, you know, about 20% hard work and 80% luck. Uh, I think one day you're going to see uh, wall hangers from all three of them. They're going to have a oh, yeah. therapy room. So uh, it's just a matter of time. As far as calling them the best, I'm sure they they got one that's probably a, a better shot at with archery, and the other one's better with a rifle. But as far as uh, how they they perform, they all work hard, and that's the the 20 percent that you can put to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Now I know y'all's name is backwoods bow hunting, but do any of y'all uh, prefer to shoot with a rifle? I uh, ever since about two or three years ago, that's when that's when I started getting serious about bow hunting. That's when the, the channel first kind of started, and that's when I that's when I really got into bow hunting. And I I would I'd rather bow hunt than death or rifle hunt. What about y'all? Yeah. I think I'd rather bow hunt most times. Yeah, whenever I killed my first deer, I was hooked on bow hunting with a bow. I haven't touched <laughs> a rifle in three years. <laughs> yeah, that's say once you go bow, you don't go back. Right? That's it. Yeah. Y'all just like the challenge of it better, or the or the uh, what? What do you like better about it? The after more crowd. The challenge, and then like the it's just it's something different when you got an animal of that size that you know within 20 yards or something like stuff like that uh, yeah now, and you gotta really do your homework and, and you gotta really do your homework and be right there in bow range too don't you it's a little bit harder yeah. and you gotta know more what you're doing with the bow than the rifle you can reach out there and touch them pretty good okay. go ahead Chris. 
Uh, who gets the worst buck fever? Shakes. Griffin. I'd say probably me. <laughs> yeah. when, we, when he shot that bear, I could feel his heart beating in his boots, in my <laughs> boots. <laughs> Yeah. We got a Catherine, a Catherine Dyer in the chat room saying Dalton. Yeah, that's a I'm not sure what she's referring to. <laughs> Is that a girl or a girlfriend from your class? No, that's just a girl. A girl <laughs> I don't know. He's pretty red on our side over here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know if I'd been that close to that bear, I would have had the shakes regardless. That's just too close. <laughs> I, got, I got 18 yards away from him. He did really good because, I mean, I think that was his first encounter with the bear. And, like, as a, as a person sitting next to him, he handled it way better than my first encounter with the bear that close. So uh, I was really proud of him. I've had a bear one time come to the bottom of my tree stand, and I, I think I held my bow the longest draw I've ever had on a ever. I just I wouldn't let it go because it wouldn't leave. <laughs> and finally, it walked off, and I was just—I was so relieved that it walked off. And I, I, it was just one of those things. I wasn't hunting bear; I was hunting deer. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I had mine draw back for what? He, the first time he drew back, he drew back for about a minute, and then I, I told him to kind of let off and, and let's try it again because he was moving so close. That that whole flat up there. Um, is nothing but grapevine and oak. So that he they when they graze, they come through and they graze like cows. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You can shoot a bear there. Um, I mean, if you sat in that stand, you you could shoot probably two or three different bear a day there. Uh, wow. But it, it's it's unbelievable. Um, but at the second time, he pulled back probably for about 25, 30 seconds. Yeah, I saw that first draw. He held that forever. I mean, that was a long draw. Yeah, and it's good, making me shake. <laughs> to be honest, he, he controlled it very well because, I mean, I would have done been, my arm would have been doing this number the whole time. <laughs> Holding back like that. I would have been like just shaking like nonstop, you know I mean? I couldn't, I couldn't do that. What would you say that hunting has taught y'all? And each one of y'all can give an answer to that if you want to. Well, just loving the outdoors and, you know, just love being in it and hunting. What about you, Jordan? Um, you know, it's different for me because uh, I, I actually started hunter, hunting a lot later in life than what these guys did. I didn't actually um, start hunting until I was 13. Uh, I, but about 16 years old, I, I started taking it a lot more seriously and, uh, it's where I actually developed my relationship with God. And, um, it's a whole different place for me. It's, uh, it's relaxing. It renews me. It's, it's, uh, you're watching the book of Genesis unfold before your eyes every morning as, as the woods wake up. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think, I think as far as what it's taught me is it's taught me and a great, uh, just an appreciation for everything God's done. Awesome. A great answer, man. Yeah. It, it, it's, it clenches your soul being out there on the, in the woods away from everything. It's, it's really a, it's really nice being out there when the sun rises and watching the woods come to life and all that. I totally agree. What about little man in the back back there? Uh, I think mostly just respect to the woods and you know what you harvest makes you have a lot of respect for it pretty much in wildlife. All right, good answer. Chris, waiting on you. <laughs> uh, Jordan, Jordan's answer was really good. Uh, uh, I, it was I heavy, know. wasn't it? It was a heavy answer. Yeah, it's – it's. <laughs> I don't know. It's different for me because my Uncle Todd, uh, he died about, I think, five or six years ago and uh, he was the one that got me started and uh it's i mean there's really not a time that goes by that i when i'm in the woods i don't think about him and uh just being thankful for uh what he poured into me and um having the respect like connor said for the animals and the game that you're uh, harvesting Great answer. Awesome. Good answer. well it's awesome sorry, you got sorry about your loss 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome that you got to spend that time and he was able to pass that down. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I've got another question. It's, it's kind of just an easy question, but uh, ground or tree stand? Tree stand, definitely. Mm -hmm. Ground. Do you like it? I love the ground. I like the ghillie stick most of the time. Really? Yeah. I don't know. It, it depends where I'm at, really. We'll say. If like if I'm hunting like a traveling area, I'd rather be in a tree stand. Yeah. But like Love guy. They kind of the ground. Cause he Jordan just got me into um hunting public land down there with him and I'd much rather be on foot down there because you gotta be a lot of it's, you know, like spot and stalk style of hunting. Hiking four and five miles a yeah. day. Yeah. You're hiking a lot and putting a lot of hours on the boots. So you got to be, you got to be versatile as far as that goes. Y'all out there in the hilly terrain in the mountains, is that right? Is that oh, way yeah. West Virginia is where y'all are at? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down here in the foothills of the Appalachia in North Georgia. So I know a little bit what it's like. It's rough hunting, ain't it? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's hard work. Yeah. yeah, they make you earn them. You you don't go in there and just get one. You you working for one in them hills. Especially with you know, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of hunting yeah. pressure here too as well. Yeah, here too. Now I noticed. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say we don't really have that. I mean, we do in certain areas, but I that's not where. Like for for the most part, our big bucks are are in other areas of the state. They're not in that, that hilly area. Like if you go down there, a big buck might score like one ten, one twenty. But if you go up to the western part of the state, northern, I mean, you might get like a two hundred class. Yeah, it's right. Like a difference. You're cutting out a little bit, there, Chris. Everything. Let me see if I can move a little bit. See if that is that better. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, I know y'all got some nice shirts there. I don't know if y'all have a store where y'all sell these at, or um, if y'all was giving them away. If y'all had a had a had a website where you had your merchandise, I was wanting to let y'all plug it in there, and maybe we could sell y'all a couple t-shirts if you had a website for it. Yeah, we do. Um, it's. It's actually uh, it's through Wix, so it's it's backwoodsbowhunting dot com slash Wix. Um, all right. It's all it's kind of it's a little bit shaky right now. I gotta I gotta go in there and do some stuff with it. But we do have shirts and hats. I've actually uh, I just ordered some hats today, so they'll be they'll be coming in. Sweet. I'm going to see if I can get a moderator to find that and drop that link for you. Maybe we'll get you a couple t-shirts. I know there's a couple guys in here that like to like to help people out. So maybe we'll get you a couple of them shirts going. Thank you. Now, what, what in, out of everything that you could hunt, what would be your dream hunt? Elk. Elk. Everybody wants some milk, don't they? <laughs> I like White tails in Alberta, Canada. White tails in Alberta. That's interesting. That would be a fun hunt. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you guys. My, my dream hunt's right here in West Virginia. Um, I, I, I'll i honestly put some of the West Virginia boys I know up against any any boys in any states as far as how the caliber of hunter that they are. Um, it's, you know, here this, this year I've, I got in front of two bucks so far this year both over the one fifties and, um, you got to work to do it here. And, uh, I've hunted other States. I've, I've seen other deer, but there's something about West Virginia whitetail, the amount of pressure that they have. If you can get in front of a mature one, whether it's a hundred inches or 150 inches, they are one of the most intelligent animals you're ever going to run into. Yeah. I, I agree with that hundred percent. I've seen whitetail do some really odd things. And, and you just question it at that point. You're like, yeah, we're, are we the dumb ones? You know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> my, my buck I shot last year, uh, the first buck I shot last year, he was uh, he scored out um, like one, 128 and some change. Uh, 
but he actually had me patterned and I had to go off my pattern to kill him. They will pattern you. And, uh, yeah, I've actually witnessed it. And if I didn't see it firsthand, I wouldn't, I would have never even known that deer was there, but he totally avoided my camera chap. I guess it was just by luck that he was staying out of range of the camera, but I was hunting close to that area and I watched him avoid that camera trap. And it was, it blew my mind, man. He knew what he was doing. It was obvious. I, I went in to refresh my minerals one day and, uh, he was there. Griffin saw the trail camera pictures as a witness. Uh, he, he was there five minutes before we and he was that. five minutes after he came back and he, and what he ended up doing, he was bedded beside the four wheeler trail that leads to my hunting stand and he would watch my four-wheeler leave. So I parked my four-wheeler in a new place and went in, up to my stand in a new direction. And he came right through about five minutes after I got my stand. I didn't even have time to harness up. Awesome. I watched, uh, I watched the buck belly crawl. Literally belly crawl. <laughs> well, I had my buddy in his stand. There was a thicket back there. And if he was low enough, he couldn't see him. And that... It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Literally, this deer goes from standing upright, and I'm like, oh, he's going to get him a good one today. And literally, it lays down and crawls. And I'm watching it belly crawl. It was the strangest thing. I've seen that once myself. It is, it's odd. <laughs> it is. I was like, why, why? How do they know to do that? But they are. They're smart, smart animals. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Chris, you got any other questions? I didn't want to keep these guys on here too late because I know, uh, well, they said they're on delay, but still, I didn't want to keep them on too late tonight. Yeah. Um, I don't really, I mean, I can ask some more questions, but I, I've, what's your, okay, so, Ali, do you like to hunt early bow season, rut, or late bow season? Right. What's your favorite? The whole, I mean, the last week of October through the whole month of November, or the, I mean, but the second and third week of the no, of November is the, in my opinion, the best time to be in the woods. Yeah. So I, you I, going like, for the I like the last two weeks of December. About last I, two weeks of December. Yeah, I like that. I like that first week. Sec first, last week of October, first week of November is pretty hot down here. But actually, I, I, I'm really torn. I'm actually either the first week of boat, like the first week of boat season before the deer are educated this season coming in, or the last two weeks where, I mean, if you can get on any acorns on the ground, you're going to run into something. That's what's hard about the land that I hunt on. Man. There's nothing but oaks out here, and, and they're everywhere. So you cannot pattern one specific tree. You know that they're everywhere. They'll be up here in my yard after the season's over, eating acorns out of the yard. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what thing I've always liked was that first week, because you usually can still see them in bachelor groups. Yeah. And you get to see like what what caliber you actually have. You know, now not that you'll get them for the rest of the year, but you get to at least see them, you know, and that's always been my thing that first week. Yeah, it's too hot down here for me in that time period, man. Oh, yeah, it, it, was, hot. it was warm this year. It was, what, 84 degrees that day we were bear hunting? It, <laughs> it, was, was, hot. <laughs> it was hor. It was, it was bad. <laughs> the rain was hot. Yeah, it wasn't even comforting. It was just like <laughs> boiling water. <laughs> now, have you got a bear before, or was that your first one, or going to be your first one? That that would have been my first one, if, yeah. I ain't got one either, so don't feel bad. At least you got to stick one. Yeah. Want to get me for another one this year. Yeah, yeah y'all do any fishing? I, I well, fish. He does. A good bit. I, I do a little bit of catfishing at uh at night, but that's that's about all I can get into anymore. I need a brook trout fish. I don't want to fish at all. Don't fish at all. Not hardly. They used to bat. They used to bass bass fish all the time, but yeah, all three of us did at one time like when tournaments. we were when we were younger. They they fish tournaments and, but I just. My focus is is on hunting. I think that's kind of why I've 
put fishing down. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is for me too, man. I mean, even in the off season, there's so much to do. If you got private land, you know, people in public really don't get to experience that as much. But uh, some stumps still go out there on on public land and hang cameras and put out minerals and stuff like that. But yeah, I had 14 cameras on public land in March this year. Wow. You go back and only have two. <laughs> Sorry, what? Did you go back and only have two? Uh, no, honestly, um, I I take a climbing stick with me and I hang. Yeah. Like, I hang my uh, cameras typically 15 feet in the tree uh, and I hang them in small enough trees where bears can't get them. And most of the time, uh, I think my favorite trail camera picture this year is I, I got a picture of uh, the back of a big old dude's bald head. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's looking, he's looking right at like, cause I, at that time my, my stand was still uh, in the tree locked on and he's staring straight at my stand like he just has no idea what it is. It's, it's pretty humorous, but that's probably my favorite picture I got this year. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to move on to what we call rapid fire segment. And uh, since there is multiples of y'all, each one of y'all can answer individually if you want the same question or y'all can take turns um, on each question. It's up to y'all. But uh, in a zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? AR. Probably an AR. Definitely an AR. AR? I figure I'm going to die. I'm going to get a battle axe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably take an AR. Pack a ninja sword. <laughs> what, uh, what animal annoys you the most in the woods? Probably a squirrel because, you know, they think, they think they're deer. Just, yeah, mine is a, an alert, mature doe, and I cannot control myself. If, if one blows and stops, <laughs> oh I, I shoot her. I have to. That's, it's that's, a whole. It's like it's almost <laughs> worth getting fined from the DNR if it's not even in season. Gosh, I hate that. That's definitely mine because yeah. you're just trying. You're sitting there trying to hunt. They just want to keep blowing. And, and they're they're like just, any other deer, even mature bucks. Uh, mature buck will sometimes forget where your stand is, but that doe will be there like three years later and walk in just bust you right off yeah. the bat. God, I hate those things. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to shoot one tomorrow now. <laughs> <laughs> um, if your house was burning and you could only save one item, what would it be and why? Probably my bow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know why for that. So. It's yeah. my guns. I just try to save a gun or two, something. Oh, I have to. I have to get my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're calling her an item, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to eat one, keep one as a pet. And uh, what was it? Eat one, keep one as a pet. I'm sorry, I didn't write that down. Anyhow, eat one, keep eat one, one keep pet. one, or ride one. Yeah, a ride one. Okay. Caribou, whitetail, coyote. Right. Ride. I would ride the caribou, keep the whitetail, and what was it? How big is this coyote? <laughs> <laughs> it's I think a big and part wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. I think I'd ride that coyote, man. No, I think that's the one I picked up. Eat Eat the caribou. Always kill the white tail. Yeah. Oh, always kill the white tail. <laughs> yeah. Eat the caribou, kill the white tail, ride the coyote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I agree with that one. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if y'all were lost in the woods, how long do you think you'd survive and why? Depends on what I had. Can I have any guns? No, I don't know. Uh, truthfully, I, the way I, um, I started getting into more of the outdoors before I got into hunting, and uh, I was with like a, somewhat of a survival group at like 14, 15 years old. I, I honestly think I'd do fine. Um, I, I think I could make it until I probably would imagine the thing that would get me, I'd probably end up freezing to death at some point uh, out of just poor choices. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, as long as it's – 40 to 50 degrees, I think I could go for a pretty long stretch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I'd go for a good wall. Okay. So so it's cold, I'm trying to die. I ain't trying to stay in that. Yeah. yeah. My feet go numb. I'm going to crawl in the river somewhere and just call it good. <laughs> Somebody gave you a million dollars and you can buy anything you want, but the stipulation is it can't have anything to do with hunting. Uh, what do you buy? Wow. I buy land. It can't. can't be oh, hunting. yeah. Uh, man. I guess a nice house. Probably a nice house and some some dirt bikes, I yeah. guess. I'm hiding mine in a coffee can until you change your mind about me using it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good answer. All right, this is for the schoolboys over here. Would you rather all the girls like you or date the prettiest dumb girl in school? Yeah. <laughs> I had no clue. Uh, it's hard to talk with your girlfriend watching, isn't it? I don't got no girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that boy's cheeks are turning red. <laughs> I don't got a well, she's watching you. Don't now. It sounds like. <laughs> I just praise dumb girl. Oh. Praise dumb girl. <laughs> no, I don't know. I dated dumb girls. You don't want that in your life. <laughs> She's so pretty, though, you might get overlook her dumbness, but I don't know. Jessica Simpson was like that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 That's a good, that's a, that's a very valid point. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't pick the dumb one. So you'd just rather have all the girls in the school like you? Yeah, I guess. That's pretty much what yeah. goes on for Griffin, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> just about. If I'm going to take him hunting, i got to carry a stick with me and beat the girls off to get him to the woods. Yeah, I hear you. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, mountain oysters or frog legs? Frog legs all the way. Frog legs. Frog legs. <laughs> mountain oysters. <laughs> <laughs> we got a question that popped up in the chat room. It says, being young hunters, do you feel the average hunter you come across don't quite respect you for your age? Um, that's why they try to help us. It just it depends, really. Um, you have some some guys that because I mean when I shoot a deer, I get excited, and uh, I had one of the videos. That guy got 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 upset because I was I was laughing out of excitement for their brother. Actually, he shot a, he shot that eight point. And he, he got upset and kind of tried to degrade the channel. And I feel like that's kind of what hurts the hunting community is just too much. Because yeah. you know, everybody has their own way of hunting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're our worst at killing our own sport. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Trophy hunting. Yeah. I, I won't call myself a trophy hunter. I mean, I think you're lying if you say you don't want you know, a nice deer. Um, but for me, it comes, it's about, uh, it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. You know, those are everywhere. These young bucks are everywhere, but it's harder to fool a mature buck. You know, there, there's just more to it than, you know, shooting the first deer that steps out for me. But I agree. There's a lot of, there's a lot of hunters out here that's, that's, you know, cutting each other's throats and you don't need to tell anybody what they can and can't be shooting or, Nothing like yeah. that. I agree with you. We we had one of our other um guests that we had on Mia, we actually had that exact same conversation with her, and she's even she's even dealt with it a lot. Um I think it's a common thing, it seems like like yeah. hunters, another hunter's dad. And she brought up a valid point. It's like there's enough anti hunters out there there that are against us that we you know, we shouldn't be putting each other down because yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got enough as it is, you know, so. Yeah, you yeah. got the bow hunters putting down crossbow hunters. You got the muzzle loaders that put down rifle hunters. You got the rifle hunters that get put down by the bow hunters. I mean, it, it's all over. We need to unite, and we need to be recruiting, and we need to be representing in a good way and, and carrying this thing on because the truth is there's more anti-hunters now than there is of us. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a dying breed. It definitely is. 
But all right, back to uh, rapid fire. What is the one thing you don't know how to do but wish you did? Kill a big deer. Pretty <laughs> 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 uh, much. Don't know how to do it. Dude, I don't know. I, I would like to learn how to like tan hides and, and, oh, do, yeah. and do my own taxidermy. Yeah. Because, I mean, dude, last year it hit me. Like, I, I shot – Two two bucks uh, that were pretty great last year, and I thought, you know, I, I had a November eighth. I, I shot the biggest buck I've ever shot and lost him. So I was planning on having, you know, and that between those three deer, if I would have had to get that one mounted too, that's that gets expensive. I mean, every year if you're yeah. looking at yeah. possibly dropping anywhere from four hundred to shoot. I think one year in taxidermy, I had a bill close to two thousand dollars, and I mean that's just. I mean, it's it's a good problem to have, but it still sucks. I, mean, I, don't, want, I don't pay two thousand dollars for that. You got to start doing them euro amounts, don't you? Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, I guess that's probably it's probably mine too. That I was guess. Mine. You can save a lot of money. Yeah, you can. Yeah. More money for hunting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Well, probably how to find a bunch of ginseng. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean I can I can ginseng hunt a little bit, but I can dog. I'd like to I'd like to be able to just walk on it anywhere. <laughs> That's so hey, that where they do that show up there where y'all are at? Is that where yeah, they shoot? Yeah, yeah. There's a guy there's a guy that lives out the this next road. He's about he's about ten minutes away. He's on that show. Wow. That was neat. Now, if you were invisible and could go anywhere you wanted, where would you go? Probably, in, probably in a in a betting area. I was about to say probably where a big old buck stays or something. What about you, Jordan? You know, a few years ago, I had a, a bear that kept running all my deer off. I'd like to find his den and probably give him a good kick. <laughs> <laughs> we got a question that came in on instagram it said can you ask the boys if they have any future goals in hunting such as competitions or possible mentor programs that will help bring in more youth to the sport thank you uh i know me and me and jordan are talked about like I think he's he's doing um, here coming up. He's he's having people in from what is it Florida? from Florida. I'm, I'm taking a, a family from Florida um, bow hunting for bears, and uh, I, I've honestly uh, my my goal is if I can find a stand that's really hot and it's got a lot of action to it. No hunter wants to sit and be bored, uh, especially if they've not been in front of any animals. So if I can find new hunters and I have a hot stand, my goal is to actually take them. Uh, in fact, I had one stand this year that um, had a buck running it that was an old mature deer that was going to score somewhat decent. And I kept trying to get Griffin out to that stand because it would have been his biggest buck. So my goal is to try to, like, if I have to work hard and someone else can kill it, uh, I'm just trying to keep the sport alive. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I definitely, I love shooting. I've got a group of, uh, of young guys, Griffin's one of them. I got uh, Ike Boone and Cordell Escher, a couple other guys there that um that are shooting with me. And uh, it, you know, if, if anything I can teach, because my goal isn't really to kill the biggest buck. My goal is to kill nice bucks, but teach someone like Griffin to be better than me at that. That's awesome, man. We need more people out there like you, definitely. Cool. I have a I have a, a mentor um, myself. He 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 asked me about probably I guess it's been five years ago. He's like, "Are you tired of killing a hundred inch buck every year?" And I was like, "That's all that's in the woods, dude. You're not going to convince me there's anything else." And he was like, "Well, what if I started working with you? Because I think you're I think you're really close to being good at this." And I was like, "Well, show me." And uh, you know, he he ended up helping me set a few stands and teach me a few things. Taught me how to read a topo map and. Uh, that, that kindness is something that even if I teach a hundred people, it, it's something that I still won't ever feel like I could repay. That's awesome. I mean, that's absolutely amazing that you, I mean, that, 
it's really fortunate to have somebody come in like that to do that because there's so many people out there that don't. And I know, like, even with fishing, uh, there's so many kids that they, they love to go fishing or they love to, but there's nobody there to show them that kind of stuff. And it's yeah. always cool to see those programs, those mentoring programs, whether it be hunting or fishing or anything outdoors. Um, it's always cool to see that. And, uh, you know, it, it really helps out a lot because it is one of those things that before too long are going to go away, you know, if, if we don't yeah. continue to, you know, educate and stuff. My goal would be to start something similar to fathers in the field, I guess, if, to, to give that a lighter or easier answer. Uh, that if I, could, if I could do a mentor program like that, um, uh, you know, this year I, I taught Griffin some about mock scrapes and I'm just, I'm just getting involved with the, these two guys, but if I, if I didn't have my way, I'd like to put them in front of a couple bears and, and, and teach them some stuff as well. I mean, Griffin's turned into one of the best shots with the bow that I know, and it's only been after a little while of coaching him. He's doing awesome. So you're doing all this voluntarily, or do you are you a part of a program? Uh, honestly, um, it's all just – it's all volunteer. Uh, if I can find somebody – you know, I just ran into a guy uh, about two weeks ago at the church. He hadn't really – started coming there consistently he is he is now but um he said he'd like to get in front of some bigger deer and now my goal is to and i hope hopefully maybe this season at least once uh to take him out and get him in front of some of the deer that i've been in front of because i mean i've i've videoed i send griffin probably a, a video of a 100 inch buck once or twice a week that most guys around here would drool over and uh it's just a matter of knowing how to get in front of them and you know, uh, I'm not, I'm just not associated with the group, but if I could find a group that would have me, I'd, I'd love to join it and, and pour out in the young people. Cause I mean, they're the future of this. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I, I do have a question for you. What do you guys see with your channel going forward? I mean, what are your goals for your channel? Like if you could let people know kind of what you see uh, for your future and, and what you plan on doing in the future, as far as, YouTube, as far as social media, I mean, what are your goals for that? Uh, I mean, I'd love, I'd love for it to, you know, take off and, and make it big, but I, I would like to, you know, establish a, like a store with, you know, merchandise and all that. But kind of like what Jordan said is, um, I'm actually this, this coming fall, I'm going to be able to work with, um, the dream foundation with helping uh disabled kids and uh adults to uh getting in the woods and hunting um and i'd like to be able to, to film stuff like that too and just try to you know make the the channel and the hunting community as big as it can be awesome That's we awesome. had another question in the chat room it says, if you seen a three-year-old buck, would you shoot it or pass? The term, the management of the buck in the area. I guess what he's trying to say, uh, you know, some people, they manage for, for mature deer only. Um, if you saw a three-year-old, is that a take in your neck of the woods, or or would you pass and give him a year? For me, it depends probably, how big. Yeah. Um, I mean, I let a 140-inch eight-point walk two seasons ago because he was three years old. Uh, personally, it's, I would never, it was one of the hardest decisions I made in the woods and um, he's a beautiful deer. And, uh, but I, I feel bad for robbing something of its potential. Uh, so right. personally, as a personal conviction, um, I would never condemn anyone for it if they shot it. Uh, truthfully, if he would have walked around the corner and someone else would have shot him, I would have been thrilled for him. But for me, uh, and, and, you know, I live by the, the saying, uh, dead deer don't grow. And that's a spot that I'll be hunting. I'm still hunting today. And it's, uh, it would only benefit me if he survived, and, you know, he's, he's state record potential. Uh, so, uh, for me, uh, I, I would do my best to let him live. Uh, but at the same time, I am only human a few years ago. Um, I shot a hundred inch deer out of a quick decision, um, that was two and a half years old and it was not on purpose. Uh, the deer came through and I just, 
I thought he was a different deer. And in fact, the other deer was traveling with him. It was the first week of bow season. And I just screwed up, shot the wrong deer. So, I mean, stuff like that happens. But uh, I, I would try to let him survive and get bigger. I agree. It's rare around here. To, I mean, you see a two or three year old, and it's rare to see them at three in, in my parts of the woods. And I only live on 80 acres, but there's potential if I if I could get people on the same type of management plan that, that butt up to my property, they'll shoot something. I'll let it walk. And you'll hear it go up the ridge and they'll bang, bang, it's dead, you know. So it's yeah. it's rare for deer to get over three years old right here. In, yeah, in my I have mostly public land, so I understand that struggle. I mean, there's this public land. I don't, I don't have an acre of it there in most of those places. So chances yeah. are it may not survive, but it wasn't because I killed it, you know? Yeah. I, right. I saw, I saw a post the other day. It said, cause you know, we've all heard all the, if you, if you let them walk, the neighbor will get it. And it, it said, you might be that neighbor yeah. if you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's kind of what I, cause I've only, I've only got 80 acres here. And, you know, there's, there's deer that I've let walk that, that live to see another year. And there's, there's some deer that don't, I mean, I've got, I've got one, he's probably two and a half years old and he's, uh, he's got some potential to be a, a stud if he lives another, another two years. But it's just, if the deer can, if they can find a place where they don't have to, you know, travel yeah bedding a food source water and and good cover i mean there's really no there's no need for him to go any further so that's what me and him are kind of trying to build here at that at our farm here because food no water and cover that's what they need yeah you give them everything they need on your property and they they <laughs> shouldn't have nowhere else to go but at the same time it's hard to manage for that smaller property you know it's hard to hold hold there um, a lot of, especially the mature bucks, they don't want to tolerate the does and the does usually move in and run everything off. It's really hard, but it is, it is very possible. So I wish you luck in that. I'm not there with you, man. <laughs> One of the problems that, that we've ran into here is, uh, well, I think it, it's everywhere, but I mean, you can have a piece of property, say 80 to hundred, 160 acres and you manage it and you do all this stuff to it literally you'll find somebody hang a tree stand on it the next week you know or you'll oh, yeah. find somebody in there hunting it <laughs> and uh and they're killing your deer and you go down to the convenience store where everybody's got their pictures up showing the deer they killed and you know the section of land that they're sitting on with that 12 point that you just saw run by the week before you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh yeah i've had people so, i had someone down here below me um move take take my stand down and move it 200 yards on their property into a horse field and that just stuff like that people steal your some people will take your sd cards out of your cameras which is just as you might as well take the whole camera if you're going to take the sd card you know yeah. <laughs> break your camera to the rock shoot, break, with pistols. shoot them yeah, yeah. Maybe they didn't want to be seen on your property, so they just took the the card. They wasn't thieves. They just took the card to hide their identity or something. But I'd people, rather take the card than my camera. Connor's. He's me and him have checked his camera <clears throat> for the past probably two months. Somebody's been deleting his pictures. So I mean, yeah. I had nice bucks on him too. Yeah. Now I've got a question for you guys as well as Josh in the chat here. I've, I this is a question. We, this came up over Thanksgiving. Me and my uncle were talking about it. Have you guys ever had problems with horses running off your deer? No, we have cows there. Yeah, I've, I've seen. We had we had a cow run off of about probably a hundred inch eight point. Yeah, that's that's the only encounter I've had with them. That's crazy. I I've, I've never even. Of course, I hunt mostly public land, so if there's a horse or a cow out. It's yeah, probably, it's probably yeah. yeah. There's there's something really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, every time, yeah, every time I've uh, every time I've encountered a place where they had horses on the property, I've literally watched them run bucks off, and I don't know what that's about. And I'm just curious if other people have had that experience. I wonder if horses are affected by brain worm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know. That, I know. White tail do. They do. Uh, 
they do carry brain worm and they're able to kill off other animals like antelope and it's how they protect their areas. So I wonder if horses know that. I don't know. I know the elk that we we've introduced to West Virginia are really struggling with it. Um, they're, they're dying off from it. So I don't, maybe, maybe the horse knows something. <laughs> hey man, animals got weird. weird Shannon was asking, uh, she says total girl question, but how can you tell the deer age by just looks? And, uh, Shannon, the best way I can explain it is if you look at these young boys back here, you can tell by their body, the physique, how how slender they are. You know, you you'll look at a, a young deer, a young buck, and it'll look like a doe without without antlers. When they start getting about two and three, they'll look like a teenage boy starting to get in their prime. But when a deer gets about three, four years old, they'll start getting a sway in their back. And they'll start looking like a thirty year old man. They kind of get a pop belly. Their neck starts filling out. Their neck come down into the brisket, but. Just imagine them looking at, at, at 15 boys to, to 30, 40 year old married men with, with uh, bear bellies. <laughs> dad bods. Dad bods, yeah. Dad bods, there you go. Hashtag dad bods. <laughs> um, I just had one more, one more rapid fire question. We got all over the place here. What is something you think that kids understand, but adults don't? How to let deer walk. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will. I mean, he said how to let. There's a lot of, there's a lot of young hunters that are are willing to, um, are willing to let deer walk and try to to let these deer reach their full potential while the older breed don't like it i it's mean just made to them yeah of course I the older the generation of west virginia this is a very like typically poverty stricken area for the most part so a lot of these older people they they look at it as survival yeah. um you know hunting was survival there at one point for a lot of people from west virginia so they they would shoot anything and everything that they saw. Yeah, I mean, and, and they, they're still not happy. But I, I know, I know a guy just down the road from me. I've talked to him several times, and the dude will go into the woods. And I'm not going to say names because I don't want him getting in trouble. And he'll knock down every deer he sees when he's out there. <laughs> every dag on one of them. Brown and down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it don't matter if it's spiking. I'm not talking to him illegally at this point. The dude just knocks them down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with them on that. Like I, I. I've been able to talk with them and show them how to age and score deer. And they listen very well versus like some of the older guys that have tried to join in and, and hunt uh, with me before, man, like, you know, I've watched one of them dragging 90 inch deer out of the woods and was sure it was a giant. And I'm like, dude, no, that's a, that's a year and a half, two and a half year old deer. You, you just, you just shot out your, your genetics for the next two years. I mean, yeah, you can't put yeah. it back. So I'm glad you got your deer, but at the same time, yeah. and, and the next season after you taught him that, he'll do the same thing. It's just no, no changes right. for that older generation. It's yeah. just, I mean, cause like, I mean, 30, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, there wasn't, I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot of deer here. No, that's right. It was my, I know their dad, he was like 13. He's about 15. He was like 13 or 15 the first when the, we saw his first deer off the school bus. Yeah. So I think for the older generation, just like he said, if it's brown, it's down, you can't eat the horns. That's kind of how they get what they go by. But they're the first ones to shoot a, a first year spike that's 100 pounds versus 160 pounds yeah. when it comes to the field. That's, that's <laughs> kind of my thing. I mean, if you. When it comes down to it, you can do whatever you want, but and they think, say they taste better when they're them little spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think milk I mean, soaked animals always taste better. <laughs> uh, I just, I would much, I, I would rather shoot a doe than to shoot a small buck any day, because yeah. I mean, there's yeah. just there's not much of a downside to shooting a doe, really, because I mean. There's plenty of them. There's, I know my my buck to doe ratio here is is pretty. Adamant. Twenty-two to one. It, yeah. it's, it's high here. It's very high. Like where I hunt, it's fourteen to one. Yeah, it's roughly. It's very high here. So it's hard to get that that I can shoot, one I can shoot anyway. Four or five doe here and, and not be hurting a bit. You wouldn't even notice they're yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah. If I have obviously twenty does in our field before, that boys. Yeah. yeah. At time. 
Well, then, I then you, say you can't eat the antlers, but you tell them you can't put the meat on the wall either. <laughs> yeah. 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 I definitely, I definitely see that a lot with fishing as well. Like it's not just hunting. Like fishing, uh, I've, I've come up on people that have like a 10 pound bass, a six pound bass and a five gallon bucket. And you walk up to me like, what are you doing with those? And they're like, I'm taking them home. I'm going to fry them up. This is a lot of fish. I'm like, those aren't going to taste good. <laughs> what are you doing? But you, know, you can't change people's mind, you know. If they're going to keep them, they're going to keep them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that's just trigger happy. They don't have patience. Some people, they just, you know, they're not hunting the good areas where they're going to get a chance at a trophy buck, and they just get tired of waiting, and they go ahead and shoot it. And You know, you got some people who do want the meat. You know, my brother, he's a meat hunter. He, he keeps freezers in his deer year-round. But... Yep. Yeah, we got them like that. I know families that they have it calculated up how many deer they need to have in their freezer before some hunting season ends. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, thanks for the super chat, buddy. That wasn't necessary. Appreciate you for stopping by. Thank you, Jimmy. Better guys, late than now, never. Guys, what is the best way you found to prepare and cook your deer? Remove the silver skin. Get rid of that immediately. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's that's mine. I, I, I really, yeah, I like to hang mine, like, especially around here. It's kind of cool. I like to hang them for about 24 hours before I really cut them up. But then just getting rid of all the silver skin that you can absolutely get rid of. And uh, and my favorite way personally is I like an old iron skillet and uh, salt and pepper on each side of a tenderloin, big old thick cut tenderloin, and uh, fry it up. That's 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 my that's my way of living. Yeah, that's the main thing. A lot of people don't let them age. You know, you got to age them and let the blood get out, and you definitely got to get that silver skin off there. And then most that. people over overcook them. You know, you almost want the deer deer raw because they're so lean. There ain't no fat on them, so it don't oh, yeah. over. An overcooked deer is just that's horrible stuff right there. I mean, it's it's not even that good. Yeah, I'll still eat it because I'm just I, there's not much I want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean. Like he said, that silver skin and that just all there's not a whole lot of fat on it on a deer anyway, but the fat that there is I get rid of. Um but like he said, I just I I fry I fry mine up and uh just throw throw stuff in as I go, really, you know. Just a shot yeah. of this and a shot of that. And that's kinda how I do it. Now y'all put it up there in the mountains. Do y'all like them uh, mountain oysters? No, nah. <laughs> negative. <laughs> now, what's your favorite wild game? I like deer. I I I like deer more than I like elk. You're crazy, dude. Elk is elk's amazing. <laughs> I just have no desire to hunt them. If someone wanted to send me elk meat, then I'm I'm all about it. But. I just I don't really have the desire to hunt them. Of course, I'm caught up in what I'm doing here. Uh, it's hard for me to break away from anything. Yeah, I, it, this is a full time job chasing West Virginia whitetail. Yeah. I mean, deer. I think elk. Like when you when you open up a package of meat, the elk smells cleaner for some reason. And like, because if you if you open up a package of deer meat, it like it's it smells bad. <laughs> In my, in my, it really, no, it really does. I agree. With in you. my opinion, uh, but like elk, I've had someone send me tenderloin, and it like, it doesn't have any smell to it hardly. It's so good, and it's it's very good. Um, I don't know about probably, elk. Probably I don't have them down here, but uh, I know what you mean about the smell of deer. It's it's got a really. It's kind of I don't I don't want to say rancid, but it's 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 off putting, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if someone smelt it before you were to cook it for them, they, they probably wouldn't even consider eating it. Yeah. Yeah. Elk is very, very tasty. It's it, I like, out of everything I've ever eaten, elk is really good. And so everybody's been telling me moose is like even better than elk. So one of these days uh, I might. Have to bison try really good. Buffalo is really good. I'd say that's probably a close call for elk for me. Like, one of those two. And what 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 is it? Bu buffalo. 
Like oh, Buffalo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Buffalo's really good. Yeah, it's really a struggle, man. Because uh, when you're talking about like actually consuming an animal, there's man, as as long as it it's meat, it's just. It, it's a soft spot for me. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm a meat eater. It's always too. <laughs> I definitely like. I, I like buffalo. It's really good. We have a lot of places here that serve. Buffalo. Well, uh, y'all got any plans or any websites or anything y'all want to share before we let y'all get out of here? Uh, any goals y'all want to share with us? Um, drop your links for uh, Instagram. Is it Backwoods Bow Hunting on Instagram and, and social media too? Yeah, it's Instagram is Backwoods Hunting. Okay, we'll have uh, the mods. Y'all can drop their links if you want to for us. Are y'all on Facebook or only Instagram? Uh, Twitter? Uh, just Instagram and uh, of course you know YouTube. And right. then YouTube's just Backwoods Bow Hunting. Okay. But uh, we'll I'll be go over there and check them out. If y'all ain't got them, go over there on Instagram and uh, go on over there to YouTube. Check them out. Whoever it was that dropped the link for the shirt, if you would drop that one more time, please. Might have to get one of them myself. Chris, you got anything else before we cut them off? Well, I definitely want to go to the wigs and check out the new hats that are coming in. I'll yeah. Have to check that out. Absolutely. We'll be in we'll be in touch with you. I know he likes that black and green as you can see on his hat. It's, he he yeah. got the same. <laughs> yeah. Those shirts I'm not, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm those shirts I'm kind of partial to. I'm, i I like the black and green. Yeah. My body redo it want to do it lime green, so Yeah, this is I mean this is one of our this is one of our hoodies here. Nice. This, this one's nice. kinda old, but it looks good from here, man. I can't tell. Thank you. Uh, anything else y'all want to share with us? Uh, just, you know, stay tuned to the channel because there, there, there'll be some – I know me and, me and Jordan are supposed to go back down south. Uh, and we, we got south and possibly northern hunt. And yeah. then we also have uh, several bear hunts we plan to do. Yep. I just, I just joined the group uh, this year. Like I, I've kind of just been hanging out with Griffin before, but he started involving me this year. So my goal is to actually start involving these guys and in, in some of those trips with us. Uh, but so I just, I mean, stay tuned because I, I really think we're, I think one of us are going to end up knocking down a pretty good deer this year. Awesome. awesome. Um, they're asking for y'all to say that that uh, merch link one more time so they can put it in the chat room for you. I have it written down. It's a uh, it's backwoodsbowhunting.com slash, I think it's Wix site. Is that Wix, W-I-X or W-I-C-K? W -I -X. Or? The, link, the link is in my Instagram, is in the Instagram bio. If, if anyone wants to okay. go there, look on it there. Good deal, good deal. And let's see. Uh... Man, I'm sorry about the rough start. We ain't never had that happen. I think maybe uh, StreamYard, they did some updates, and maybe something was wrong there. <laughs> maybe it's his new phone. I don't know. Sometimes we run into problems, but nothing like that. So I apologize for the rough start. Awesome. And, uh, everything out of whack. I'll probably take this and, and re-edit it and upload it again. That way we don't have all that mess in there. Clean it up, make it look a little bit better for y'all. And uh, maybe we can get y'all some views and, and some new followers and – and we appreciate y'all for coming up here and hope you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, y'all are representing the younger generation well, and and we're looking forward to follow along with y'all. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate yeah. you having us on here. 